Hi, everybody. Welcome to this quick webinar on the Texas Library Journal and how to contribute articles to the journal. Um, I'm Wendy Woodland. I'm the Director of Communications and Advocacy at the Texas Library Association. Hello, everyone, and I'm Michelle Santos. Uh, I'm the Marketing Specialist at TLA, and I'm also the Assistant Editor of the Journal. Thank you for coming. So um, as we're going through this, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. And we also have plenty of time at the end for questions. Um, and we can you can unmute and, and share your questions or we'll answer them in the chat. So first, I want to give kind of just a quick overview about the Texas Library Journal. Obviously, it's been published for many, many decades. Um, about, I guess, two Two years ago, in 21, we went to a fully digital production. We no longer print the magazine. So it is a digital-only publication. It's published four times a year. The issue that comes out in January, our winter issue, is the one that includes the conference program as of probably early December uh, is when we um, get the copy for that, for the, that issue of the journal. The April issue comes out a couple of weeks before conference. That spring issue includes the conference exhibits listing and some additional information about the event, obviously, in addition to um, all of our other news. Then in June, we have the summer issue, and in September, we have the fall issue. So our audience for this, obviously, is librarians and library staff at all types of libraries and at varying career levels, varying points in their career. Um, the journal is not a peer-reviewed journal, and we don't do book reviews in the journal. Um, we really uh, are looking for articles that, you know, will appeal to a broad audience and kind of share news and information about what's going on in the library profession here in Texas. So our copy deadline is the 15th of the month prior to publication. So for example, um, August 15th is the deadline for our September issue, which comes out on, I think it's the third Thursday of September. Uh, we run feature articles that are generally 1,000 to 2,000 words and other articles between 500 and 800 words. We also include, uh, we have a news notes section that includes um, sort of news, you know, if somebody was you know, promoted or some, uh, a library got a grant or a library got, um, you know, an award for something, you know, we'll include little blurbs about that in our news notes section. And we also list all of our association events there um, that we're aware of. So we put those also in the news notes section of the journal. So it's emailed out uh, the third Thursday of the month um, on those four months to all of our TLA members. Um, and then it's also shared on the website and we share it out on social media. So it has a pretty wide readership um, of, of librarians around the state and probably, probably a lot of folks too outside of the state from social media. So I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle to talk about content. So, at the recent officer workshop, um, part of the reason we're presenting this webinar is we had a lot of questions about how to, uh, you know, how to write for the journal, what kinds of articles are we looking for, and it's a pretty wide range, uh, so I'm just going to go over uh, some of those different types of articles that we're looking for. So in general, the journal shares best practices for librarianship, and it also celebrates the Texas library community. So best practices, innovation, and trends that will inspire and inform readers. Um, if you have a unique library program, for example, uh, we had a recent article about Grapevine Public Library has a musical instrument lending library, and uh, that was something that was cool that they were doing and that we thought other people could benefit from reading. Um, an interesting professional experience. Um, we've had people write about uh, when they're 
library was flooded um, during the hurricane and then how they kind of bounce back from that. Um, and it could also just be uh, an interesting partnership you maybe had with a group in your community. Um, collection development, archiving, cataloging. Um, we had a pretty popular piece about um, sort of checking the diversity of your collection or, or thinking about diversity when you're building your collection going forward. <clears throat> um, technology is always one we're looking for. Um, I would love an article from an academic or university person about chat GPT and how that's, um, you know, sort of some of the controversies about that, but also um, how to use that tool effectively and safely with your university students. Um, leadership and mentorship. Uh, if you, you know, went to a conference that you want to share some of the things you learned. Um, management, human resources, facilities. Um, we've had just a wide range of things. Even we had a pretty popular article about switching from public librarianship to school librarianship or from school to public that I know a lot of people read. And and just kind of some of the things that I know people are talking about, we would love to see reflected in the magazine. <clears throat> uh, serving diverse populations, whether that's ex expanding. Um, we had an article recently about some public libraries and their service area expanded. So it was how to reach out to those new communities and also you know, being more inclusive as a library. Um, challenges and solutions, whether that's you know, fundraising or staffing. Um, obviously during the pandemic, we wrote a lot about uh, the challenges libraries were facing. Um, but you know, even post pandemic, I know there's everything from budget cuts to obviously the uh, sort of our politically divided times is, is uh, something libraries are struggling with. Um, advocacy, uh, a lot of that, we write that, like uh, Wendy and people we ask write, about advocacy, but you are welcome to write about that too. We would love to hear different perspectives and community partnerships, um, whether it's uh, you're doing telemedicine at your library, Pottsboro uh, does that, or whether you're working with a gardening club in your community, um, and that can be like a school public partnership or a public you know, community group partnership. Basically, if it's something where at conference you would find yourself talking to your fellow librarian about it, we would like to hear a story about it because we really want it to reflect what you guys are interested in and what you'd like to read about. So uh, we get this message a lot. I have an idea for an article. What do I do next? You don't have to write like, you know, 500 words of an abstract before you submit it to us. You can literally just email Wendy and me and say, hey, I have this idea or I've had this experience. And we can uh, message you back and forth a little bit about that and, and figure out some deadlines and the story length. Um, one thing I did want to mention is photographs. So when you're thinking of pitching a story idea, also think about what uh, what photographs or charts or kind of visual elements uh, you have that we could run with the article. Um, and unfortunately, we cannot pay our contributors, but I know a lot of the people in the library community who write for the journal appreciate having that article they can um, share as part of their, you know, professional experience or list on the resume or whatever. Um, but yeah, so remember art and then remember um, just kind of if you were a librarian reading it, like what, what parts of it would you need to replicate that program in your own library? Uh, questions, do you guys have any questions? You can um, put them in the chat or the Q&A box or, um, I know some people have thought it's kind of a mysterious process to write for the journal, but it really isn't. We just, we do have quite a bit of lead time since we only have four issues a year. Um, so if it's something you think, oh, well, why haven't they written about that? You could write that article for us. So, yeah, exactly. And, you know, we want the journal to be the editorial to uh, content of the journal really to um, speak to be of interest to librarians kind of at all levels. So, you know, if, if you know, you're a manager at a library and in an academic library or any kind of library and you have an idea like, you know, I really wish that all of the 
first year librarians I just hired knew this, you know, and you want to write an article about um, kind of tips for your first year as an academic librarian or, I mean, there's really kind of no end to the ideas of things. Um, we don't publish advertorials, so we're not going to run an article that is promoting a particular product. We run across this occasionally, mainly in the technology sphere where somebody, um, you know, a, a company really wants to write a great article about um, how libraries are using their technology and it kind of just comes across as just one giant sales pitch. So um, when we're writing about technology, it's it can not always be platform agnostic, obviously, because that's sometimes what the story is about, but it's really more how a library is using it, not an endorsement of a particular um, platform or product. So, um, but we have, oh, so we have a couple of questions in the Q&A box, Wendy. Sure. Um, the first one is, is there any, from Justin, any special format for submitting and do we just email the article to you both? We don't. Um, yeah, yeah we um, we the the journal follows the uh, Chicago manual of style, but we're actually kind of starting to shift more toward AP because Michelle's a journalist, and <laughs> so that's um, how I edit. So. so we, uh, but we've been traditionally have been doing um, Chicago's manual of style. So with the you know citations sort of in the text, you know, as opposed to footnotes. But we've had articles submitted that have footnotes and we 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 run them as is like that. So um, but yes, yeah, so once we kind of once you submit the idea, we can talk about it and get an idea of what it's about. Uh, if you you submit it, just email it to Michelle and I. We will go through it, we read it, we make any suggested edits and send that back to you to make sure that you're okay with the edits, and then we finalize it and run it. But I would definitely, if you have not already written it, I would definitely run it by us first because you wouldn't want to like spend a whole lot of effort on something. And then, you know, we actually want you to maybe take a slightly different angle. So I would definitely run the idea by us first before you write it. But if you've already written it, then, you know, feel free yeah. to say yeah. it. Yeah, we get both. I mean, we get people who reach mm -hmm. out and say, oh, I have an idea for this and this is kind of what it is. And they give us two or three sentences. And then we have other folks who send us a whole article that they wrote. Um, they're like, would this be a great fit? And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, we'll read those and be like, well, it would be a great fit, but we need to change it in this way in order to make it work for our audience. And if the author is open to that, then, you know, we work together to make that happen. And Robin asked, are the articles licensed with a Creative Commons license? No. So the journal articles are basically, I guess, technically kind of TLA copyright. So um, we, I do get but I do also give authors if they ask, because sometimes they'll want to publish it or they'll want to put the magazine, especially academics, into um, their, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the words, but so I just give, yes, you have permission to run this article or use this article, blah, blah, blah. But it is not in, um, in the Creative Commons. And actually, you know, all of that, the sort of copyright issue, the sort of digital tagging that I know we get a lot of questions about as well, and I know I'm probably not using the correct terminology, is something that um, now that we have been digital for a couple of years, uh, we are going to want to look into a little bit more. But because this isn't a peer-reviewed journal, and it's really just more of an information informative editorial style, um, I'm just not exactly sure how to make that work. So if you if you write for the journal and then you want to have the journal added to some sort of collection or you want to have your article added to some sort of collection and you need sort of the permission, whatever, just email us and we provide that. Um, Wendy, John is saying his chat is disabled and now I'm worried that other people's are. But if you guys could put your uh, questions in the question and answer, uh, box, we can see it there. 
I'm trying okay. to figure I, out how Sorry, to somehow the chat got disabled. It should be on now. Okay. Uh, okay, I think, I think that was any other questions that you want to post in the chat or in the Q&A? Or the Q&A. Okay, well, thanks for joining us this afternoon, and we look forward to receiving lots of great article ideas. I promise we're really easy to work with. Um, <laughs> So uh, it's not a painful process. So uh, we look forward to getting your ideas and um, sharing all your expertise and knowledge with all of our readers. And our fall issue is kind of wrapping up already. So um, the next one would be the December one. So um, as soon as you you know think of what you might want to write about, please let us know. And we're already kind of developing uh, for uh, winter and, and spring. So um, thank you very much for everyone uh, coming. And like I said, I we've been recording it and I'll post it tomorrow. Great. Take care. Thanks, everyone.